Anina. Okay. Morning, you guys. Hi. How's it going? Hi. Hello, everybody. Well, um, let's wait for everybody to come in. Um, while we're waiting for people to roll in, do you guys have any questions uh, about the final project so far or what's up on La Lima or anything like that? Good morning, good morning. So while we're waiting for everyone, does anyone have any questions on the final project or La Lima? Morning on. Let's give it another minute for everybody to get in. Morning, everybody. Okay, so let's get the ball rolling. Um, I'll uh, maybe add people if they keep coming in, but um, uh, there's a couple things I wanna do today. So I, I guess maybe I'll pull back for a second and give you a big picture. Um, we've got a variety of different skill sets um, to get through um, over the next few weeks as we're wrapping up the final project. Um, I think what we'll do is just, uh, we need to focus a fair amount on um, your actual writing, like your feature story, because uh, as much as we've covered all kinds of different things, and I hope that's been a good experience, the variety of things that we've covered uh, in this class, um, we really haven't covered um, with any kind of focus writing. Um, and the most important thing I want to cover with you guys about writing is um, how to write your alternative lead in Nutcraft. But I'm just going to share my screen for a second to pull up La Lima because uh, there's another couple of aspects of this that are, I think, important. And that is, whoops. So we go to 200. Let me see if, if I've put everything up there for you for resources on this. Yeah, so these top four documents um, are pretty much going to cover uh, the, the writing, your 800 word written story. And so with the weeks that we have left, uh, the first things we need to do are go over um, a bit more completely your alternative lead and nut graph, like how to write one um, so that you can have one ready by the time we, uh, but well, by the time we get back from uh, Thanksgiving break next Tuesday. Um, the other two things that I just want to cover with you guys are going to be how to format quotes in your news story or news stories and common AP style issues. Um, what I would say is that, um, and I probably should have put this up on La Lima, I may have mentioned it, um, but what I'm gonna recommend that you do is um, submit your drafts of your written story. Um, I mean, I want you guys to start putting your whole final project up on, on Wix and figuring out whether you want a new Wix site for that or just a separate page within your own Wix site, if that'll work or a separate menu item on your on your uh, own page, I mean, on your Wix site. But um, what I also want you guys to do is to put your written story into a Google Doc so that I can help you revise it and everything. And then you can import that into Wix um, once we have the text right. Um, but the first thing we want need to do is cover um, alternative leads and nut graphs 
Um, and then I'll go over with you guys how to format quotes in your news stories, by which I mean just, you know, like as you guys can see highlighted here, here's the quote, it's on a separate paragraph, just going over how I want you guys to do quotes. And then these are basic AP style issues that I want you to pay attention to and clean up. Um, so we'll do alternative leads and hopefully we'll cover nut graphs this morning. We'll wrap up with nut graphs next Tuesday when you all get back. And then the stuff that I think we'll go on to from there in terms of getting the, um, the final, uh, your final project right is um, on the Thursday of, of next week when we return after break, um, we will like do a workshop where you guys troubleshoot each other's final projects and see you know, what may be missing, what could make it better. Um, so we'll do that you know, with each other together um, where you kind of map that out. And then um, we'll just work on headlines, cut lines, and all of that as we get into you know, the final days of the semester. You'll have your draft of the thing turned in on the last day of class, like pretty much the best job you can do of putting it together. And then I'll give you feedback you know, within a couple of days and that'll give you about a week to, to come up with a revised final project as well as any revisions um, or missing work from earlier in the semester. So that's kind of the overview of how we'll wrap up the semester. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Uh, somebody else is coming in, Victoria. Um, okay, I don't see any questions. So um, let me stop the share. And I'm going to put you guys into groups of pairs and let's try the alternative lead um, exercise again. So one of you should be the interviewee, one of you should be the interviewer try and find a change that you're going through, uh, the person's going through in their life right now, um, and try and write an alternative lead um, based on, on that. Um, again, you know, you don't wanna be opening your story with, the coronavirus has been a terrible problem in the United States this year with many serious challenges. That's not, don't begin it like an essay, begin it with, an anecdote or paint a vivid picture of what this change this person is going through in their life right now. And then you guys should work. So you should do the interview to figure out what the change is and what the nut graph ideally would be. In other words, what's the story really all about, which is this change. And then you wanna figure out how you would write that opening hook, that anecdote or the picture you wanna paint. And you wanna try and write that opening just the opening, we'll worry about the nut graph later, but you have to figure out what the change is first that the person's going through before you can write an opening that pulls us into the story about that. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna try and now do the breakout rooms and pair you guys up, um, bear with me. Why don't I give you all, um, I'll say, uh, let's see, till 10.55 to um, get together. I'm, I'll go from room to room to see how people are doing, but try and, and do the interview and get the thing written in, um, or, or a draft of just these opening paragraphs in 15 minutes. Let's see how we do, okay? And if you're done before that, then signal me um, with a thumbs up or something um, so that I know that, um, you guys are, are ready to share, okay? Um, does anyone have any questions about what we're about to do? I'm gonna pair you up. Does anyone have any questions? Everybody get it? Okay. So. Um, hold on a second. Uh, I, just, I just joined. Yeah, hey, how are you uh, doing? So Oh, Ethan. Um, so Ethan, do you remember the, um, the exercise we did where I pair you guys up? Uh, one of you is the interviewer, the other is the interviewee. You identify yeah. a, cha a change that the person's going through and then you write the opening hook to that. Right. That's what we're about to do, okay? Okay. 
Gotcha. All right, and you'll have 15 minutes to do it. Um, I'm about to open the rooms uh, and then I will move from room to room. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me go back. Shoot, wait a minute. Ugh, um, hold on. I'm going to have to manually assign everyone, evidently. Give me a second. I'm setting all this up. Okay, um, Nate, Vic, and Zach, you guys are uh, a threesome. Every, other than that, everybody else is uh, is is a pair. And you guys have fifteen minutes, and I'll circulate. All right, let's go. did he mean oh sorry there he, <laughs> um are we doing a alternative lead for both people no just one you only have 15 minutes so so uh just do one okay you guys have okay. any other questions no nope. okay i'll see you in a minute we'll we'll go over what it's all about as we go with this because I want to do an exercise on both alternative leads and nut graphs. So I'm trying to move a little quickly. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Uh Do you guys have any questions? Is it? No, you're we doing did it. an exercise a while ago and it was like, it's similar to this, right? The one the where it was like, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, just write a little anecdote, right? Don't make it like an English department, like an English class <laughs> essay, tell a story. And mm -hmm. you got to figure out what the nut graph would be. We'll do a nut graph exercise later, but you have to figure out what the change is about, what the story is about to, to figure out the opening, right? Okay. I'll see you guys in, in a few. Do the best you can. How's it going? Hi, Mr. G. Hey. Um, so do you guys know what you're doing? Do you have any questions? We're just trying to figure out what to talk about because it's all kind of like, I feel like life's kind of at a lull right now with everything. Aren't you going to New York, Kate? Potentially. I finished all my applications, so. Well, so that's a change. Yeah, that's true. I didn't know that. All yeah. Right. Ethan, what about you? Are you going through some momentous or anything big going on? Your like crisis or anything? <laughs> like crisis. <laughs> um, 
Not really, no. Every I've just not really, no. Nothing. Okay. I bet ordinary. there is, but but he's uh Kate Ethan's being shy, so <laughs> you guys stick with uh New York. Is it okay if we did that last time too though? Yeah. Just you know, just work on your craftsmanship here. Try and get it's an a, update. Well, yeah, just try and get a good. All you want is a hook, a good opening. So help him out, Kate. Find a good, like, think of a good thing. Weren't you gonna do one about the moment? Um, it's beginning to come back to me now through the mists. Something about like the moment when you realize, like, I gotta get. I'm getting out of here. Oh, I remember. I remember us talking about that. Yeah, um, work on that. Okay. All right, because we only have a brief time, so just work on the craftsmanship. All right, I'll talk. I'll see you guys in a few. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Having masks is. Hello. Sorry. Do you think that? like having masks is um, contributing to that problem too? Yeah, I definitely think like the masks and also like the plastic gloves has definitely been contributing, especially since like, um, I know like a lot of like health officials had to like double, like right. double glove and double mask, which is like even like more, like sort of like doubled, I guess the amount of like plastic waste, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but I know like people think like you know like people people kind of think that like since they're staying home and stuff that it's like helped the environment like yeah it has in terms of like carbon emissions but we've also like sort of like contributed to like more plastic waste I would say yeah do you guys know Plus, what you're doing do you have any questions for me um we don't really have an idea as of now we were just kind of asking each other questions um well let's see um you don't have do you have a, anything like a, a decision you have to make right now carly or uh now with, what about with thanksgiving going on does that bring up anything for you um not too much because i'm not at home anyway so I can't really change what I would normally be doing. Um, is this the first time you haven't had Thanksgiving with your family? Uh, no. It's not? No. I did last year, too. Uh-huh. Um, Isabella, just before I ask Carly anything more, is there anything mm -hmm. going on with you in Thanksgiving? Are you in the end of term? Or any questions you're facing? Um. I have one question just like about my the final project and like the feature for mine I was thinking of doing it on like plastic pollution like and so I was wondering for the feature like do you want me to look at like one specific thing in plastic pollution or just like generally the more you can narrow it um were you just talking about plastic pollution in the pandemic um I was just gonna I guess, yeah, I wasn't sure exactly like what angle I was gonna look at, but probably either like a pandemic or just like health in general, maybe. Yeah, the more specific you can be, especially with time, timeliness, the better. So plastic pollution and the pandemic uh, with health would be better than just health in general. Okay, thank you. And then, I mean, that's large enough that you could get a main story and you know, the the two, the infographic and the side piece as well. Okay, and then for sources, like, does it have to actually be like interviews or can I like do like record like, or somehow get like sound bites from that? What? Um, For like sources, like interviews, like um, it's for, right? For the- Yeah. Okay. Um. But, but right now, worry about what kind of a change you're going through. Are you going through anything over Thanksgiving, like not being at home or with the end of term coming up or looking at next term? Um, I'm home right now, so I'm not really like affected by like travel 
or anything, and I plan to stay home. And then, yeah. Are you Canadian? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're not doing anything for Thanksgiving, I guess. No, we had our Thanksgiving in October already. Oh, I see. Um, all right, well, you guys need to come up with some kind of a change that one of you or the other is going through. Uh, Isabella, what about the fact that you haven't been home? I mean, Carly, um, that you haven't been home for Thanksgiving for the last couple of years. Are you feeling like yeah. estranged from your family or something? Um, not too much, but we can, we can discuss how, like, holidays, I guess, like, how I'll be able to go back home for Christmas and stuff like that. Yeah, do it, do, do it on your feelings about your family and the holidays and see if you just can f figure out an alternative lead, like an opening to that, okay? Okay, sounds right. good. We don't have that much time, so just do your Thank best. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi, you guys. I just was checking in to see if you have any questions, if you all know what you're doing. Yeah. What? Yeah, we, uh, we have a story. Okay. We're going to go with Victoria's. All right. You making any, uh, are you guys making good progress? Yeah, I think we have a good old lead in the works. Okay. Um, well, I will, uh, let's see how we're doing in uh, 15 minutes. Maybe, uh, hold on, let me see. I've got the timer that's telling me right now. Um, okay. Uh, we just had got joined by a new person. All right. Um, I got to run, but um, I'll, I'll check in with you guys about the time, okay? I'll broadcast a message and people can chat back, okay? All right. I'll see you guys. Thank you. Nana, can you hear me? Hey, Dr. G, sorry. <laughs> I came right. so late. <laughs> um, we're just, we're doing a series of things this time and over the next couple of classes to work on your, the writing part of your final project. So we were doing that alternative lead and nut graph exercise again. Uh -huh. um, I can, I think, assign you to a room, um, but um, I think, I don't know how to tell. Oh, there's only two minutes left. Well, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. With only I mean, I can just listen to what everyone is doing to just see what. Because okay. I kind of already started mine, but uh, yeah, sorry, it came so late. <sighs> That's all right. Um, let me um, let me broadcast a message. You know. Say so two minutes left. Give me a heads up on how much more time you need. Let's see what they say. Can they, when you're in a breakout room, can you like text back to me? I have no idea. Usually when my other professors do it, they actually just pop into our breakout rooms. Yeah. They try to like message. Well, which I can do, but with five rooms, it'll, it'll take me about 10 yeah. minutes to get. Let's see if they uh, are able to, to chat back. I think so. Um, but um, yeah, so um, how's it going with your project? Good. Um, I reached out to Nick Oaks. Nick Oaks, yeah. Um, we did do some emails. 
I think his is probably going to be more so included though in the written part. We didn't really schedule like a audio interview. <laughs> so uh, he didn't want to do one or well, I sent him like a list of questions that I was thinking of asking him, but I guess he thought that I was doing like a transcript type of interview. Yeah, you know, I'm I keep telling you, Nana, you know, do not use email for interviewing and reporting. I yeah. mean, you know, maybe as a you know, I mean, I would cover what you're doing with that, but I would not use, you know, because then this is what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, um, tell him you want to talk to him anyway. Okay. You know, um, because getting, you know, you're going to just get canned answers when you email people questions like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. But I mean, did he give you other sources? Um, let me go back and see. Oops, it ended all the breakout rooms. Oh. Are you guys, did you guys end your own room? Yeah, I think we did. Okay, are, are you ready? Or do you, do you need to go back in and, and keep working? Um, I think we're ready. You think you're ready? I'm not exactly sure. Um, well, do you have something to read us? We just have a short lead. How long is it? Well, we kept it short. Um, so like maybe like a sentence because we didn't think the lead, it, it like wouldn't have made sense to make more. Okay. Well, it looks like people are, um, are leaving. Let me, uh, let me, let's see. Looks like. Uh, everybody's uh, rejoining the group. So let me check with uh, rooms four and five because they're still in session, see what the deal is. And I'll be right back with y'all, okay? I cannot hear you. Sorry. The other, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. The other uh, folks are about to start sharing. Do you guys, want to join or do you want to keep working on yours uh yeah we can join okay all right i'll be uh i'm gonna check with just room six and then i'll uh i'll see you all there okay okay thank you we'll all get together and share okay it right, looks like Maybe everybody is, hold on, let me see. All right, I'm gonna check with room six and then I'll, uh, we'll all share, okay? Cool. What were you gonna say? No, I was just saying cool. Okay. Acknowledging you. Well, thank you. Are you guys ready to join us? Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll all be back together. Yeah. Um. So who 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 broke up first? It was it Krista, are you guys ready to go or Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh hold on. I have to close breakout rooms. Uh give me just give it a second, Krista, for everybody to be here. Okay, go ahead. I think Erin's gonna read ours because she interviewed me. Yeah, so all we said was, uh, at this time last year, Crystal Rados and the University of Hawaii track team are preparing their first meet of the season. This semester, the team just started practicing last week. 
Okay, let's let's hear it again. At this time last year, Krista Veritas and the University of Hawaii track team were preparing for their first meet of the season. This semester, the team just started practicing last week. Okay, um, well, that's an opening. Um, it doesn't give me a reason, like what's the reason to keep reading? I mean, it's kind of a hard news lead, but it, it doesn't start with an anecdote or a vivid picture that draws my attention. Okay. Um, we'll look at some examples so you guys have a better idea of what you're shooting for. All right. Um, how about uh, who, who's next? Ashley, which, who's in your group? Um, Kelsey. Okay. Um, you guys want to read yours? Sure. Um, over the summer, Kelsey, while in California, went surfing on her boat and got in trouble. Is that it? Yeah, it's not good. Well, it's, it's just a start. I mean, it sounds like the beginning of an anecdote that you're going to tell. Is there an is there an anecdote there that you guys are going to tell? Um, I don't I don't know. I I didn't really. I just kind of read that like first sentence. Um. All right. This is about Kelsey. Yep. All right. Where are you, Kelsey? I don't see you on my screen. Hello. Oh, hey, there you are, right next to Ashley. Um, Kelsey, is there a story there? Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> What's the story? Um, well, I was home for the summer in California, and the beaches were all closed, which was just crazy. And I decided I would take our boat out and go anchor up at one of the coves and paddle in to surf. And then I was surfing and then a security guard came down and yelled at me and it was this big ordeal about it. And it was just crazy that you couldn't surf. Okay, so yeah, so there, there you go. There's your anecdote. And um, you guys don't need to doll it up uh, really or dress it up. You can just tell it in plain language. But Ashley, do you get what I'm saying there? So I could just say like, um, while surfing in California over the summer, Kelsey, just like start it, you know, like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We even need all that much wind up, you know. I mean, you can put in the fact that she's in California as you're telling the anecdote, but you wanna you wanna get as directly as possible into the scene and telling the story. And I mean, I might press Kelsey a little bit more so that we had a clearer, I mean, it sounds like there was a lot of shouting, but we don't, we don't have a, you know, necessarily a clear endpoint of that little picture she painted that we might be able to sharpen that a little bit, but, but just to paint the scene of her on the beach and being, you know, approached and hassled about this gets us into a story. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you pull back to the broader point about what she's going through. Um, Ethan, what have you guys got? Um, okay. Aspiring art major Kate Sparhawk visits the school of her dreams in New York only to leave wishing she had stayed. Okay, so again, you, you, can you anticipate what I'm gonna suggest here about it? Um, fill me in. Uh, you need to give us, let's, let's look at a couple of examples of these, you guys, okay? So you have an idea of what they look like. Let me um, put them in the chat, but I'll also share my screen. I'll put these links in the chat first. Okay, so here's one. 
I'm going to put the link in and here's another one. Just read the first couple paragraphs of the story. And here's a, this one's a good one. Maybe start with this third one. So let me share the screen. Okay, so who's a good reader? Ethan, since we um, left off with you, um, can you do me a favor here and you see what's on my shared screen? Yep. Can you read it? Yep. Okay, so start reading and um, I'll tell you where to stop. Okay, uh, from well, the top? Yeah. <clears throat> On a summer night in Dallas in 2016, a bomb handling robot made technological history. Police officers had attached roughly a pound of C4 explosive to it, steered the device up to a wall near an inactive shooter and detonated the charge. All right, the well, stop right there for a moment. Can you see the difference between the way this is opening? And can you guys see the difference between the way this is opening and the way that your, your story is opened? Yeah, it like leads to a certain event. Yeah, it's a specific. So let's read this anecdote, which is these top four paragraphs. Okay, go ahead. Just continue from in the explosion. Yeah. In the explosion, the ass assailant, Micah Xavier Johnson, became the first person in the United States to be killed by a police robot. Afterward, then Dallas Police Chief David Brown called the decision sound. Before the robot attacked, Mr. Johnson had shot five officers dead, wounded nine others and hit two civilians, and negotiations had stalled. Sending the machine was safer than sending in human officers, Mr. Brown said. But some robotics researchers were troubled. Bomb squad robots are marketed as tools for safely disposing of bombs, not for delivering them to targets. In 2018, police officers in Dixman, Maine, ended a shootout in, sim in a similar manner. The profession had supplied the police with a new form of lethal weapon, and in its first use as such, it had killed a black man. A key facet of the case is the man happened to be African American, Ayana Howard, a robotics researcher at Georgia Tech, and Jason Bornstein, a colleague, a colleague in the University School of Public Policy, wrote in a 2017 paper titled The Ugly Truth About Ourselves and Our Robot Creations in the Journal Science and Engineering Ethics. Okay, now read the next. Like almost all police robots in use today, the Dallas device was a straightforward remote control platform, but more sophisticated robots are being developed in labs around the world, and they will use artificial intelligence to do much more. All right, so let's stop there for a minute. So by now we're getting into the nut graph. Do you guys see that? There's kind of a, a gradual transition a little bit, but you can see where the anecdote ends, right, with the Dallas situation and where the bigger picture comes in. Right. And that, that's what we're trying to do. Um, so let me, let me see. Um, Isabella, do you guys have uh, an anecdote like that? Or, or, you know, cause I'm thinking maybe we take another shot at this. Um, yeah, we kind of created a lead for the original, but. Okay. Um, so you want to try an anecdote this time? Um, what do you mean by anecdote? Well, like this is an anecdote, the situation in Dallas with the, with the, it's a little story. An anecdote means a little story. Okay. Um, so like this situation in Dallas with the, with the bomb squad robot is a two paragraph anecdote. Oh, you see? Uh, Here, wait. let me let me pull up the shared screen again. So if you look on on my screen, mm -hmm. right here, 
This is an anecdote. Okay. And you see, but some researchers were troubled. Bomb Squad, this is, they're not telling the anecdote about what happened in Dallas anymore. Now we're into the broader questions about it. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Nate, how about your group? Um, do you guys have an anecdote or, I mean, cause I'm thinking at this point, maybe the best thing is for us to go back to the breakout rooms. If I can put everybody back where we were, uh, uh what? Oh, I kind of have an anecdote. All right, you want to share? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Victoria Budion Budiono is planning to leave very, very early for her trip to California this December. Getting on a plane was never easy for Budiono. Being born in 2002, she has only known a post 9-11 airport. As an in Indonesian citizen studying in America on a student visa, she recently has to pass through customs. Now in the middle of a pandemic, she has to pass another checkpoint, the COVID test. Uh, yeah, that's better, but it's still, um, it's sort of starting us off with, a, with an essay rather than a specific story that you guys are telling. You're, you're hypothesizing about what she's going to have to go through. Um, if, if, if what you're, what's the focus there's supposed to be on her anxieties or issues about traveling during the pandemic? No, the story is going to be, um, how, uh, Victoria has only known, you know, like how traveling is just more and more difficult because she was born in 2002. So that's post nine 11. So there's TSA and then she's, a. uh, uh, India, uh, she was born in Indonesia, so she always has to go through customs. Now there's another layer with the COVID test. And so it's just like her, her anecdote is like probably one of the toughest examples of traveling uh, through America. So folks, with the formula I'm, I'm suggesting to you all, what would be the best approach for an opening with that being the nut graph? Does anyone have any ideas? I wanted to do a story of like her, like frantically running through the airport or like waiting in a long line or like leaving really early, but we just never had time to like talk about that story and get the details in. Okay, so let's go back into the breakout rooms and Zach, why don't you go after something like that? What, what kinds of questions would you have to ask to, to get that um, from Victoria? Um probably asking her like um like I, I don't know her experiences going through customs and stuff like yeah. that yes exactly you got it yeah okay i'm gonna do my best so it's let's see krista you're with aaron right yes ashley you're with kelsey ethan and kate isabella and carly and have, we, have i got that all right Okay, um, and Nana, you're gonna join Krista and Aaron for this one, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, let's do another 15 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna open them and then, uh, hold on. Okay, and then I'm gonna add Nana, okay.
so much. Yeah, I feel like that would be so much easier to write about. Yeah. Sure. You want to tell the story then? Okay, so. Um, um, two friends were supposed to come to Hawaii with me because they were also going to go to UH, but they both don't have US passports, so they weren't able to come and they're coming for the spring semester because the visa um, embassy people just like the embassy the U.S. embassy just like decided to issue visas to students in back home. So you were like the only student in your high school to get a to get a visa from the embassy? I don't have, I don't need a visa because I am a U.S. passport. I have a U.S. passport. If you're not a U.S. citizen, you need a visa, like a student visa. It's called the F-1 visa. So like all of my other friends need to have the F-1 visa to come into the United States because of like, I don't know, like Trump. I, I'm not so sure what he did, but like the ICE thing and like the deporting of students remember that thing i don't know because yeah. they're all americans right so i don't know if you got yeah but basically he like wanted to like deport all of the international students or something because of i don't know if it's because of covid or because of politics i'm not so sure but that happened and like um they couldn't issue any student visas anymore so everyone like from high school, they can go to US for college, at least for a semester because of the visa thing. But I could because I'm a US citizen. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that does make sense. So have you, has she given you guys, a, would you guys say that she's given you a story yet? Like an anecdote at the beginning? Yeah, but it changed, we're changing the angle. Um, well, she's not quite there yet, right? You're not quite, like, where could you go with what she just gave? If you if you got limited time, you're on deadline. And I mean, you just, anecdote, where could you go from what she just gave you? You just go through the disparities of a, being a U.S. citizen and a non-U.S. citizen who needs a F-1 visa, right? Well, that's, that's getting more, Zach, that's getting more into the explanation and the broader context. But she's just told you something personal right? Look at the okay. personal aspect of what she told you. She was able to go, all her friends can't. So if you're trying to draw a picture of Victoria and her immigration situation, then maybe the thing to say is, was there a, was there a moment when you all got together and talked about this? Well, she's not immigrating. She's an American citizen. Well, it doesn't matter. Very clear. You want to find out, was there a point at which she was able to go and like they all talked about it, she and all her friends did. Victoria, do you remember something like that ever happening? I mean, we all, cause all of my friends, at least like my group of friends, we're all like going to the States. I mean, everyone got accepted to like universities in America. So everyone's like all over the country, but like, and then we all made plans to like meet up in California for Thanksgiving and for Christmas they would all come to Hawaii to visit me but then like towards like June I think um, all of the visas visa appointments got canceled and nobody could fly so then like um, yeah so it was really sad. Was there a moment when you found out about this with your friends do you remember like a conversation yeah. or a we were all in in my friend's house there you go okay so this is what you guys do we are all in my friend's house this is okay. where your story begins do you understand you guys have to drill down with people to get them to tell you a story okay. um, the explanations and everything that's all good you need all that but what you really need is the story so let her tell that you write it down and then that's your opening okay we were just trying to get the facts right because um, admittedly I was a little confused because um, 
I, she said she's an American citizen. And so she was talking about like getting in and out and then talking about F1 visas. So I was just a little bit confused and I was just trying to get the facts right before we, we tell this, this story. So no, I apologize. I, no, no, you don't have to apologize, Nate. I'm, I'm just trying to explain a I'm trying to help you guys with some of the method here, okay? Because you're right, you do need to get the facts. We would never have gotten to the point where she was ready to say we were all in a house together until you had done that preliminary. So there are layers to this, right? It's like peeling back an onion. Um, that's all I'm trying to point out. But you have to, what I think the trick is at this stage, because you guys have never done it before or you're developing experience at it is is having a clear line in sight of what you're after. Like her explanations are good, that's getting you closer, but at the end of the day, you gotta move in on the, the anecdote. You gotta look, you know, you gotta figure out where you are in relation to that. And when, when you learn something like what you guys did, you know, you, you got to the point where she's telling you, I was the only one who was allowed in, everybody, I was there for that. You guys got us there. And what I'm saying is, then you got to go the next step and you got to say, okay, was, was there a moment when you all learned this? And that's when I got my anecdote. That's where I get the goods. Right? Okay. All right. I'll, I'm going to keep circulating. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Bring. Um, is there any other reasons why you decided to stay home? Um, not really just to like, because of my, like all my classes were online and like, if we weren't going to have practices or whatever, then. So did you guys manage to find like a little story about this? Um, we're having trouble finding a specific story, but we're going off the idea of like not being able to practice due to COVID. Uh, practice what? Like for athletics, yeah. Okay, so, um, and what did you just tell her about? What did I just come in with you telling her, Isabella? Um, like for the analysis, like to kind of go more broad and then in depth. Well, I mean- That she didn't the, come because she has online classes and they won't be practicing until the spring. Okay, so was there a moment when you got the news about that? Yeah, we had a like team Zoom meeting at right. the end of July, that's and then that's when our coach told us. So, Carly, that might yes. be where your anecdote starts. Did you just hear what she just okay. said? Yes, on a team Zoom meeting. Yeah, so you know, I was just talking to the other group, and and. And, um, and Victoria was got to the point of explaining broadly, sort of like what Isabella's done here. She was saying, you know, I realized that I, because I was an American citizen, I could come to America, but all my other friends that got into colleges could not. And they, those guys had, got, had figured that out. But then it was up to me when I jumped in the meeting to say to Victoria, was there a moment when you all talked about this and it all came together? And she said, yeah we were all in my friend's house and I just left them at that point. I said, okay, this is where your anecdote begins. Just like Isabella just said, we were all, now that may not be the perfect anecdote, but at least now we're in the zone, right? Yeah. You guys, Isabella, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So good luck. I'm going to keep circulating. Thank you. Oh. Stuck. What? I'm stuck. Yeah. Um, what have you got? Uh, I just deleted it, actually. You deleted it? No. <laughs> Control Z, man. I don't want to. <laughs> well, all right. Where just where are we at? I mean, it doesn't, this isn't, don't think about it too much like creative writing or you'll get fucked. Like, that's exactly what I'm doing. 
Yeah. So you've got to learn that the, 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 the learning curve here, Ethan, is that is that in reporting and this kind of writing, you got to learn to paint with your facts. So we, you know, we'll know when we've got what we need. So, right. so what did we learn about Kate and her feelings about New York? Well, she, we know that she loved visiting and we also know uh, the moment that she felt that she didn't want to leave New York. Okay, and has she described that for us? Yeah, she. Uh, it was the moment she was in a she was in a taxi, um, leaving. I think were you in a taxi on the way to the airport? Yeah. Yeah, and um, she says she could. She remembers feeling her stomach drop and like not wanting to go home. All right. So, did you just write those last two sentences down? I have it in here, but it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't fit. Well, just write those two sentences right now, just in plain English. Okay. Uh, now, what is the reader? Let me give you a minute to do that. Just like you said it, Ethan. You got it? Yep. All right, read it out loud to us. I think this is what I said. She remembers the moment she was in the back of a taxi cab and she could feel her stomach drop. Whoa. She remembers the moment she was in the back of a taxi cab. She could feel her stomach drop and never wanting to go home again. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we'll make why don't you just say instead of and never wanting and realized as she realized she never wanted to go home again and put her first name Kate Sparhawk at the instead of she at the beginning of that. Sorry, Kate, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say that was like, that sounded really good. <laughs> it's really simple but it actually it sounds so good but exactly you see what i'm saying paint with facts just the facts ma'am right and then what is the very next question we're going to ask the reader is going to ask when we hear those first two sentences why uh, home? yeah why why is she feeling that way what had just happened right and so you just follow the natural line of thought. You paint with facts. Don't make it too long. Okay. I got to, let me okay. check the, the next group. Gotcha. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Are you guys done? Uh, we just saw that the time was up. So we came back. Okay. Well, keep working where you are. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Cause I'm going to keep circulating. People are still working on it. So I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We were just about Hello. to. T time wise. What? How, how are you guys doing with your effort? Good. Um, yeah, it's better than the last one. You wanna, um, so what's it about? Or you wanna read me the first two sentences of it? Um, we did two separate ones. Okay, um, if you guys wanna leave, just listen to the two that are, two people already left the breakout room, but they're still working. So mm -hmm. just listen to them out there if you wanna, if you feel like you're done and maybe help them with theirs. Okay. Or and I'm going to go to one last breakout room and the other folks are still working a little bit on there. So give them a couple more minutes. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything home? I like it all better about my decision, I would say. Right, right. That's good. Hey, Dr. G. So you guys are my last visit. Um, 
everybody was kind of inching closer. How are you guys doing? I think we're doing a lot better. We definitely have like an anecdote now. Okay. Are you clear about what this is all about? Yes. <laughs> I mean, we'll keep looking at yeah. examples, but I wanted to spend more time practicing and less time with the example looking this time around. I felt like that made more sense, right? Do um, you guys need a few more minutes? Um. Up to Aaron. Um, I think we're ready. Yeah. Okay. So join the group. I'm going to check with the, I'm going to leave. There are a couple people that were just getting on it when I visited with them. They, they had a trouble figuring it out a little. So let me keep working with them to make sure they're ready. And then we'll all get together. Okay. Just okay. Uh, join the group and listen to what, what the folks are already working on in the main group. Okay. Oh. Uh, J I F basically. Carter, do you know who Iman is, by any chance? Sorry. Do you know who Iman Ahmad is at UH? No. Okay. Did he go there? She. Oh, she. She's from. Indonesia as well. Oh wait, no, maybe not. I'm sorry. So you guys ready or uh, how are you doing? Good. Yeah, did that help? Yeah, it changed yeah. the entire story. Okay, so let's uh, join the whole group and we'll start sharing, okay? I wanna just check, uh, I think Kate and Ethan were just beginning to nail theirs down. Um, so let me check with them and then I'll join everyone. But everybody else sure. together. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Victoria. Okay, hope it helps. No, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Interesting. Is anyone there? I know we're kind of, um, we're, what time are we on here? 11.36. So I do want to do a round, but does anyone have to go right now and have any questions before I start uh, making a circle? Okay. Let's, have, you got to go, Ethan? Yeah, I have like this Hawaiian meeting I got to get to at uh, 11.45 though. It's 11.45. Well, why don't you... I mean, I think everybody probably has to go at 11.45, but why don't you, you start and uh, are you ready or, or no? I just have what we, we worked on when you stopped by. Okay, well, I guess right. read that and then maybe Kate can fo finish the thought a little bit. Of like after, what happened after? Well, read your sentences and then we'll, we'll follow up, okay? Okay. Um, in the back of a yellow, in the back of a taxi cab, Kate Sparhawk remembers the moment she was in the back. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Kate Sparhawk remembers the moment she could feel her stomach drop and realize she never wanted to go home again. Okay, so Kate, uh, that's the opening um, sentences or opening paragraph. Can you think of what a second paragraph that would wrap up that anecdote might say? Um, a second paragraph or a second like sentence or do you mean like the beginning of the next paragraph or? I mean, if the, let's say a maximum like length for a, for a, uh, like a journalistic paragraph is three or four sentences. Okay. What would the next three or four sentences basically say about the you in the back of that taxi cab never wanting to come home again? Um, well, I guess you could say the same thing, maybe just like phrase it slower. So like drag it out a bit longer, if that makes sense. Well, like going to detail? I think the question, what's, what question you guys are we left with? Re Ethan, read your sentence again. 
Uh, Kate Sparhawk remembers the moment she was in the back of a taxi cab where she could feel her stomach drop and realize she never wanted to go home. Okay, so you guys tell Ethan what what are the immediate questions you have and uh, that come to mind when you hear him read that sentence out loud. I think of where is she and why, why does she not want to leave? So that's your next paragraph, Ethan. Right. Okay. You see that, Kate? Yeah, that makes sense. So it's like if you're telling a story and you say a man's walking down the road and up ahead he sees an elephant. Now you got to deal with the fact that you got a man on a road and an elephant in front of him. Right. All right. So that's that's the way the storytelling works. Um, Carly, um, where are you guys at? Um, I can read you what we have so far. Okay. Um, halfway through a team Zoom meeting, Isabel, UH softball player, heard the news that they are unlikely to hold team practices this fall from her coach. With her classes being online and hearing other teammates' responses, she knew it was the best option to stay home in Canada. Okay. Um, what do you is that the whole thing yes yeah okay what if you were to keep rewriting that making it better what what do you think you could do to make it better um maybe talking about like how she talked to her parents or like actually made the decision because i know she like decided to but actually following through with the decision to stay home um, do you, any of you guys have an idea of what may make that opening? Um, Isabella, how about you? What might make it a, a stronger opening? I just say like maybe like at her home in Canada, like on a Zoom meeting, like kind of give like where she is more specifically, maybe if that yeah. would help. But what, um, how about you guys? What might make that stronger, more interesting to the audience to, to draw us in? Maybe uh, uh, talk about her emotion a little bit and how everything's been uh, crazy and anxious filled lately. I don't That's know. right. That's right. So you guys, here's a crucial lesson about all kinds of writing, whether you're doing journalistic writing or fiction writing or whatever, any kind of storytelling. Plot is character. Okay. Plot is character, which means we only experience what's happening in a story through the people in the story that we identify with and through what they're going through. So they become our emotional, you know, they carry the story through with us emotionally. So in order for us to get invested in the story about Isabella, we have to understand where she's at emotionally here, right? That makes yep. sense? Yep, yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, Ashley, what do you guys got? Um, I wrote, while surfing in California, Kelsey was chased out of the water by security. Over the summer, Kelsey was back home in California due to COVID. One sunny day, she decided to go surf. Kelsey took her boat out and anchored at a break. While surfing, a security guard came out, came and shouted that she needed to leave. Okay. Um, so Kelsey, what happened when he shouted at you? Um, well, to be honest, I acted like I didn't hear him and there was another surfer out and then we were just talking back and forth. And then finally I caught a wave more closer to shore and then he kept yelling at me. So then he talked to me and told me I needed to leave. And then I ended up just paddling back to the boat. And, uh, he was and like trying to take pictures of me to like, I don't know what he was going to do, but. He, he really took pictures of you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And like my argument was like, yeah, the beaches were closed, but like he, like it was a beach club where I was surfing at, but I came by boat, but I was like, you guys don't own the ocean. So I don't know. Okay. That last line, do you guys think that could be maybe the end of the anecdote right there? Yeah, probably. And I would just say, Ashley, don't, 
Do you think you could have, with less of a windup, just put us right there on the beach with the security guard? And then, as we now know, Kelsey pretended not to hear him. He was taking photographs of her. And she thought, you all don't own the beach or own the ocean. Yeah, so like less of what I wrote, um, like leading up to it and just kind of what you just said. Yeah, throw us right into the story, right? Mm -hmm. The sooner you can get us right into the action, right into what's happening, the better. So you guys got to drop all the essay writing stuff you're doing. Um, and let's see. Um, so Victoria and it looks like, did, I think Nate split, but uh, Victoria and Zach. You guys right here. What? Oh, you're here? Where'd you go, Nate? Oh, there you are. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Um, so how about you guys? Can you share yours? Yeah, I didn't really finish because there was a there's a lot. Um Um here, I, I honestly wrote like two sentences, but I can kind of tell you where it's going. Uh, Victoria Budiono remembers having grilled salmon and asparagus for dinner with her successful group of high school friends. In that moment, they had just graduated and were fantasizing about their future they worked so hard to get to. So they worked so hard to get. Right. Um, can you reread that one last time? That went by kind of quick. Uh, Victoria Budiano remembers having grilled salmon and asparagus for dinner with her successful group of high school friends. At that moment, they had just graduated and were fantasizing about their future. And then it would go on to say, like, you know, they were they were talking about um, uh, meeting up in Hawaii, in California. Um, and then I was going to say, like, you know, some of her friends got accepted to UPenn, Cornell, uh, the University of Chicago. Um, and then it would be like, you know, kind of the uh, status life symbols were like, you know, the grilled salmon and asparagus kind of talking about like uh, implying that they were very well planned and educated students. And then the kind of juxtaposition and all that was um, in that night they figured out or they found out that their H or their F1 visas were uh, being revoked. And so they were no longer being able to go. So you guys, so let me ask it to Nana just so that uh, because we're, we're running out of time. Did you hear what Nate did there? That this was the first time in the go round that somebody picked up on this aspect of the craft, something he did in writing that. Did I pick it up? Yeah, something he did in terms of craft that was the first time in this going around the class that we heard someone doing it craft wise, the technique. Or, or something. I Think so it did sound different from other ones we heard. Like that detail, right? About the salmon and asparagus. Yeah. So that's you that's the kind of stuff you guys want when you tell an anecdote. You want those you need it to be emotional, you know, you need it to be about a person, but it's those details that bring a lot of this stuff to life. Right. And color in the the personalities and the people. Okay, do you guys That's have- actually, I, I had a question about that. Um, yeah. I'm having a hard time like um, making it detailed while not dragging it on. So do you put the detail after you get that first like part in um, the beginning? Not necessarily. I think what you'll find is that I think that we we think of this stuff as bogging us down and getting in the way, but I think you'd be surprised how much you're able to pack into a very short and simple piece of writing, Ashley. I think we we have perceptions about it, but the reality of actually working with the words and the sentences are, I mean, what are some of the details she gave you right there? Uh, she gave you a couple of really interesting ones. I think Kelsey left, but what, which, you know, think about it. What did she tell you about in that story that were really interesting details? Yeah, like the, um, how he was taking photos and recording her and like, yes, I don't own it. Yes. And 
if you think about it in say six to eight sentences, could you fit those details in? Yeah. Easily, right? So I think what would ha what happens is that we, um, and I'm trying to remember which student it was. Um, I just didn't have the time, you know, because it, it, we have to do everything so quick because um, we have such a short time together. But um, I had wanted to play you guys. Um, one of the students did a thing about all her friends back in Cali being into cars. And I think I told you guys about this, but she, her friend had been like, yeah, this is my engine and just like revved up. And her friend had like a really small, like girl's voice, like almost a little girl's voice. And then she turns on the engine of her car and you hear this roaring. And it's just a simple detail, but that was all you really need to be an opening that draw, you know, grabs our attention, right? About this story about kids and cars. Um, so a lot of times it's, uh, you know, don't, don't overthink it. Just make sure that you work with the right materials and you'll be fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, what's up, you guys? You ringing off? Did you, uh, was that helpful today? Yeah, I'm almost, I, I wanted to read like what, I, cause I, I didn't really have, I, I honestly was just like writing notes, but. Yeah. Read it. I just, could I have like two more minutes? Sure. Uh, Yeah, I'm sorry we have such limited time to do these, Nate. You know, it's like, it, it really, we need like three hours. Zach, do you feel uh, some clarity about what, what I'm trying to show you guys here or some more? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I feel pretty good about from today. Yeah. <laughs> writing emotion has always been hard like no matter what kind of writing right well you know and i mean i guess the the upside of that is you know journalism is all show and no tell you know what i mean i mean yeah you have to, you have to tell you only want you you only want to tell just enough so that people can follow you yeah everything else you want to show 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 um, we're just not in the telling business. We're in the showing business. You know, but that doesn't mean, so what that means is, is that the details, the facts that you find are the, have, are all coded with the emotions, right? Like the, the security guard snapping photos and taking films, we get from that detail that Kelsey was feeling totally violated by the, by, you know, the, the authorities yeah um you know and and uh i mean and there are levels of it you guys have the salmon and asparagus which is perfect for the the kind of everybody's all all set and has this promising future right yeah um i guess are you struggling with how you get that stuff and in what order? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is just uh, getting people to describe their setting when you're interviewing, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to know what you're looking for. I mean, I think that that's part of it. Um, and you have to remember that, that everybody's a natural storyteller in the sense that you're, everybody's used to like when we all sit down to dinner Someone says, how'd your day go? And you're used to telling a story, right? So we all have that. That's, you know, telling stories is embedded in the way we communicate. On the other hand, Zach, if you and I were to do a story and I were to say, okay, Zach, I need an opening anecdote. It needs to be really good. I need you to give me an opening anecdote and it's gotta be really interesting, go. You're gonna be like, what, what the hell are you talking about, Dr. G? I have no idea what you're saying, right? Um, because I'm making you yeah. do all the work like I'm the storyteller I know what I'm doing you Zach you're just the interviewee yeah like, yeah but sure. if I ask the right questions I'll get you to tell me a story yeah so what you're learning now and it's just going to take practice I can only you know 
kind of explain so much of it is you're learning how to, I guess you put it correctly, right? You're learning how to get people to open up and tell you those stories. Yeah. But it's always by getting them to focus on what it is they're trying to express. You know, like I'm going to try and get Kate to express what it was like to want to stay in New York. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I if I tell her, Kate, I need an anecdote from you about why you wanted, you know, then she's not going to be any help. But if I say, Kate, why did you want to stay in New York? Or what was the moment you wanted to stay in New York? And what was it you were thinking? Those are the kind of questions that are going to get me my story. Yeah, it's just putting, uh, putting journalistic, um, what is it, vocabulary into like, not layman's terms, but like, the people who aren't used to those kind of words, right? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of like what we learn to do as journalists is is what other people would call street smarts. Yeah. And it's a lot of like what I'm talking to you about is nothing I'm saying to you is surprising, right? Like it's all no. sense. Yeah. But journalists have to, it's like street smarts, right? It's like you, you these things may be common sense, but people who are savvy or street smart have thought them through pretty well. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why I'm saying street smarts is important is because you're out there, you're talking to everyday people and you're trying to get their everyday stories out of them. So that's going to mm -hmm. take some savvy, right. About how you communicate with people so that you get what you need. Yeah. Um, all right, Zach, how are you doing? I mean, Nate. Good. Do you want me to read it? Sure. Hold on. Let me just add one more sentence. All right, here we go. Uh, Victoria Budiono remembers having grilled salmon and asparagus for dinner with her successful group of high school friends. At that moment, they had just graduated and were fantasizing about their future. Her friend Allison was off to Cornell. Her other friend had just got accepted into the University of Chicago, and Budiono was teetering on going to UCLA, NYU, or Hawaii. They had, they had gone to an ultra-competitive school in Jakarta, Indonesia, and now it was their time to learn in the United States and have fun there. Budiono was hoping to host her, host her group of friends in Hawaii. Then Allison's mom came in the room and said all of their F1 visas were revoked. For the for first time in their ultra planned lives, there was an on on ominous sense of confusion. The group went silent. No one knew what came next. For a group of students that, quote, always plans ahead, end quote, they felt stuck and confused in that moment and for their future. All right, so I, I have a line of questioning for you about this, Nate, about um, to help you improve this. But let me ask you first, when you look at this, if you're gonna do your first round of edits, what are the things that jump out at you that could have been improved there? Uh, make it a little more fun in the beginning. I don't know. Um, okay, Zach, how about you? Did you did you pick up on anything? Because I I'm asking you guys first because I can tell you, but it l let me let you guys troubleshoot yourselves. What 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 do you pick up on there that might be better? Hold on, let me just glance. You wanna, Nate, you want to read it ag again? And let's let's think about it as you read it. What could be improved? Okay, it's good. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm just uh, cutting to the chase. Cool. Victoria Budiono remembers having grilled salmon and asparagus for dinner with her successful group of high school friends. At the moment, they had just graduated and were fantasizing about their future. Her friend Allison was off to Cornell. Her other friend had just got accepted into the University of Chicago, and Budiono was teetering on going to UCLA, NYU, or Hawaii. They had gone to an ultra-competitive school in Jakarta, Indonesia. Now is their time to learn in the United States and have fun there. Budiono was hoping to host her group of friends in Hawaii. Then Allison's mom came in the room and said all of their F1 visas were revoked. For the first time in their ultra planned lives, there was an on ominous sense of confusion. The group went silent. No one knew what came next. For a group of students that always planned ahead, they felt stuck and confused in that moment and for their future. Okay. Um, any of you guys have an, a sense yet what could be improved? Um, to me, it feels a little cluttered, but other than that, 
I'm not too sure. A little bit cluttered. So what can we do about that? So Nate, I want you to circle successful, ultra competitive, ominous, and there's another adjective right around ominous. What was the other one within that sentence or right around there? Ultra planned. Right? Now, yeah. I would make the argument that the second pair of adjectives are much stronger than the first pair. Right? Um, so we've got four, okay? Successful, highly competitive, ominous, and ultra planned. Do you see why I would say that the, the second two work much better than the first two adjectives? Because um, I think the, they don't, you don't really need the first two. Well, I would say the first one you don't need. And why yeah. is that? Because you can easily infer that with what From comes the next, next sentence. Yes, exactly. The second one is good, but if you had had more time with, with um, Victoria, what, would, what could you have done with that? That's the with, highly competitive. Uh, maybe talked about it, her experiences uh, like what, what got her to this point, like, you know, like being able to be in a group full of, like in, a, in, a, in that group where they had all these like really um, competitive schools that they were getting into, like some of the struggles and experiences and being in that super competitive high school. Like, yeah. you know, cause they, they were super planned out. Well, super competitive high school, it's a placeholder for now, right? But if you're on the final draft of a piece of journalism here, I would just argue that a little bit more questioning could give us something a little bit more, I don't know, objective, factual, like fact-based than ultra competitive. Oh, like, like a, maybe like a percentage from the school, like of how many people go to uh, Ivy League. For all we know, it, it could be one of the top three schools in the country, right? Oh, or something yeah. like that. Or it could be an English language school, it could be an American school. You know, chances are there's there's two or three words at most that might be much more vivid and specific and factual than ultra competitive, right? Yeah, like evidence. Yeah, and and I guess I'm getting it less. What what we're talking about here is the balance between showing and telling, and we want to be show 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 and. Okay, like if I say, Nate, if I say, I always use this in my intern news writing when I teach that class. If I say a really fat guy and I say a 450 pound man, what's better? Did you hear me? 450 pound man. Right, you see, you see why? You know what I mean? Because the more you're able to work in, in those kind of vivid, because you, you're, you're painting with facts because you're not a fiction writer when you're a journalist, right? And so your facts are your paint palette. Just like when we covered photography, we were saying the light and the color is what you've got to work with. When you're painting as you write, it's these, as a journalist, it's these facts that allow you to color and shade and paint things in. You follow me? Yeah. So ultra competitive is fine as a placeholder, but we could probably come up with either a word or a phrase that would be more vivid and a better description than that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, I didn't have a problem with ominous or ultra planned. Why, why would I argue that if I was knocking down your adjectives uh, with at, with you know, ultra competitive or successful. Wait, can you say that one more time? Yeah, um, 
I was saying that, uh, oh, you pasted it in. Um, I was saying that I didn't have a problem with ominous or ultra planned. Why would I not pick on that if I had a problem with your adjective successful or ultra competitive? Um, because this is, there's, there was evidence before that, that backs up the, those, those adjectives. That's right. And, you know, beyond you're, you're thinking a little bit as we're, we're going back and forth, you, it's good. You're thinking about argument and reason, which is very much part of this, but I'm also thinking of dramatic arc, right? So yeah. you're right that you've presented the evidence first. To put it another way, you've built up the story. So now when you come in with ominous or ultra planned, we're with you. You're not telling us, you're showing. Yeah, well, look, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like you, it's the juxtaposition and it's the, the scene set has already been set. Yeah, you've, you've, we're already along for the ride with you. So now you can start telling a little bit more you've given yourself as a narrator you've given yourself the room to do that and it helps that's helping your storytelling along mm -hmm. so and that's an important way to kind of distinguish these choices is to say when you do switch into telling because you you can't show 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 right at a certain point you have to tell because otherwise people aren't going to be able to follow you and, but what you have to think about is um, at what point is my telling actually helping the story and making a, it a better story versus am I telling and people aren't really following me yet. I'm just telling them what to think. I'm like bullhorning them, which isn't good. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, was this helpful to you? Yeah, I like, I mean, writing is my, my favorite part in all of this. So I... Well, so if you notice, I, um, I've been trying to show you, I mean, and this is deliberate on my part, Nate, and, and, and it's, you know, you've worked with Brett a lot, and I think uh, we're very different people. And um, I, I can be very sort of traditional and old school in teaching you these techniques, because these are very specific techniques, right? And so in a way I'm trying to say, you know, there's so much of, of what you're trying to do that's just kind of completely open and open to guesswork and feeling your way that at, at the very least what I can offer you as a writing instructor is like, here's some like basic, you know, things to rules, I guess you could say to grab onto that you can follow and get good at. And then if you want to break the rules or abandon the rules, that's fine. But here's a very specific formula for how to do this. Yeah. Right. No, that's what you're saying. Yeah. And, and it's this, so like when I, I mean, most people, most journalists, when you talk about alternative leads and nut graphs, they might be like, wait, what? And they may have totally different definitions than I'm offering you right now, but I'm offering you these really specific explanations for the alternative lead in NUCRA. And you'll can, you can see so much of the time with the New York Times, how they actually follow that formula, right? Yeah. They, uh... um, so it's worth getting good at. I mean, you know, just to give you one example, when I ended up then moving on to publishing a book, I basically wrote the opening, you know, they were 20 page chapters. And I wrote the opening chapters a lot of times, not every time, but most of the time, as you know, expanded alternative lead and nut graphs. So my alternative lead, my opening anecdote might be half a page long because it was the opening to a chapter and the nut graph might be another half a page, but um, it was still the same idea, the same formula. Yeah. Um, you know, do you like the technique? Alternative lead? Yeah, and nut graphs. We haven't practiced nut graphs yet, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've done nut graphs with, um, in Brett's class. No, I, I do like the technique. I like long form journalism a lot more than hard news writing. Um, so. Um, 
this is a very paint by numbers way of doing long form, but it's good to learn. Yeah, no, I, I get that. It's not a, it's not a magazine or anything, but, um, well, it's not this American life, maybe. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I think any anecdote is like, I think that's, that's important for, for stories, even for myself, like understanding and telling it better. I think it's uh, important. I think what, if Ira Glass was sitting with us, I'm pretty sure he'd, he'd say this about it. He'd say that he practiced what I'm showing you here over and over and over and over again until finally, and he practiced it a lot longer than he thought he would have to before he finally was able to, to forget about it and move on and break all the rules. Yeah, yeah. Because I've heard him say that. I've heard him say like, you know, I was, I was 27 or older when I got started at doing this and it then took me like another 10 years of doing this before I really got good at it. Yeah. Um, so, and that, you know, may not take everybody that long, but I mean, what he does now, you know, if you think about what this technique that I've just shown you and you listen to like a lot of the, the stuff that they'll put on this American life, if it's not abandoned altogether, if he's not going a totally different direction with the, with the structure, it's a pretty sophisticated version of the alternative lead and nut graph formula. Like he'll do an alternative lead inside an alternative lead inside of a nut, you know, with and then the nut graph or something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think Brett means nut graph. I think that he would define nut graph differently than me. Would you say? Well, how do you define nut graph? Well, I wouldn't. I would. I would rarely use talk about a nut graph within a hard news story. Like Brett will talk about it when he's teaching you hard news, like basic news lead, he'll stock, he'll, he'll, he'll still talk about putting a nut graph in there. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so you have your lead and then you have the nut. Yeah, see I, I he'll, he'll use a nut graph even if you've got a basic news lead there. I mean it in a different way, slightly. You know what I mean? I mean, you put in the nut graph because you've got an alternative lead like what you just wrote right there. And so at the end of that anecdote, you're gonna need to pull back and tell everybody what the story is about. Yeah. So I'm using nut graph in only one specific context in one specific way. Brett talks about a nut graph more vaguely. Yeah, I think there's interesting examples of nut graphs. I remember reading um, the story craft or story craft uh -huh. um, and it talked about different good nut graph examples. Um, I remember like one of my favorites was in this New York Times Magazine article. It was like really old. It was in the story craft, but I think it was like four paragraphs in because it was like a magazine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. So I don't really know where I'm going with this, but it's just like, I think have, I, I don't know. I've interpreted it as having like a flexible nut craft, like with the same purpose. Yeah, so like one, one thing that what we'll do Thursday is I'll give you, we'll do a find the nut graph exercise. And what I'll say is figure out, here's several, here's several different stories. Figure out where the, the anecdotal lead or the alternative lead ends and where the nut graph begins. And here's a short list of questions to sort of ask and discuss about the nut graph. Now in one set of examples where I ask you guys to look at them, they're, they're daily newspaper stories, like maybe a thousand words long. In the other example that I give you guys, it's like the, the opening, long, a long opening story of a seven part series, okay? So the point being that when you've got a much longer piece, like a New York Magazine piece, 
the alternative lead at the beginning is going to be much longer and the nut graph is going to be longer too. Why? Because the story's longer. Yeah, um, I understand that. I just... Yeah, so you write them proportionally. Um, but what I'm teaching is still very formulaic. I don't own the definition of nut graph. I only offer you guys one version of what a nut graph is with a specific definition. You know, I think Brett's definition is is more general. Okay. Yeah. I mean, maybe I I mean I pretty much only learned from him. So yeah. So I just I just say that as a caveat because sometimes as journalists, even though we use the same words, there aren't like the definitions can be a little bit messy. I, I mean, I, not that I don't have a very specific definition of a nut graph that I'm giving you for what I'm teaching you here, but, but again, I don't own that definition. Other people are gonna use that term and they're not gonna mean the same thing that I mean. Yeah. Um, so I hope that doesn't confuse you, but I use the word because I'm trying to teach you something really specific. I'm trying to teach you this one, two combination for opening your feature story so that, I mean, you don't have to use it. Obviously, you know, you don't have to use this for every feature you write. Although I'll tell you, you know, when I used to work at a, in a newsroom and I, and I would veer off from this, a lot of times the editors would find the story really frustrating. And I would have to put it back into the formula for them in order for them to be okay with it. Um, so, you know, uh, but it's in any case, the more you practice at it and the better you get at it, the better you'll get, I think, at feature writing in general. And, you know, the easier it would be to just either break the rules or, or find some different rules and be aware of that when you're doing it. Yeah. Um, I, have, huh? Have you, do you feel like you've written a feature yet where you followed this in like a very formulaic way? Um, I mean, I was a features writer for Kaleo, but I don't know if I'd followed the rules. Probably not then because nobody <laughs> kind of walked you through it like this. No. So what I'm, what I'm going to ask you is for this final project, just you know, just trust me here, go with me and, and try the technique and see if, if you learn something from like practicing at it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, I, I need to go though. I have a meeting soon, but thank okay. you. Yeah. See you later. Bye.